This is Ray's motor generator with a vibrating rotor. A vibrating rotor releases a surprisingly amount of energy. I believe these are showing over unity effects. As a disclaimer, you may not get the same results as I and this may not be at anything as an over unity result. But this is what I did. I had put a pack of neos on each side, there's 10, north, north, south, south. This is a metal bar. I had one time taken a bolt that was three quarter inch long, quarter inch thick, put a couple magnets on it. I found out when I approached this area as it was rotating, it's in impulsive mode, the motor would speed up while the power requirements went down. Then I replace it with a telephone pickup. On the internet there are about 300 ohms. I found out later that I had one that was a 1.2 K ohms. It worked better. If you use the 300 ohm pickup coil, you'll have to only work with about one LED. If you notice this motor has a little bit of play in there. I found out that if I bumped it at the right place, I put a couple a, a, a neo on the back side, north facing this way. This is north, so they were in repelling mode, and it causes a bump every time it would come around. This horizontal vibration of the rotor within the magnetic field of the motor was like this. The minimum field strength is across where the plus and minus contacts for your uh, power supply is. The maximum field strength or 90 degrees perpendicular. I found out that if I started the vibration here it would continue through the full strength of the field. If I started the vibration here then the vibration was going through the minimum field of strength and the over unity effects do not take place anywhere else except at these points. Well instead of the uh, smooth symmetrical path well we have a disruption the coil is actually being forced as a vibration so there is a disruption in the physical properties of the rotor I believe this is what's causing it I don't know why but from my research because it does not take place anywhere else except when the vibration, the disruption path is taking place through the maximum field strength. As you can see, my setup is magnetically isolated. I have a uh, wooden dowel rod there isolating it. Physically connected though, because this shaft will move back and forth. Many odd characteristics are developed in voltage, current, and frequency, which we will see. First, we need to know what we're looking for. As a motor with an additional force applied, the voltage will rise and the current will drop. I can illustrate this by using my thumb as an external force applied. We're going to see 3.17 volts. If there is an over unity uh, effect taking place, this voltage should rise because we're not drawing as much from the power supply system. And you can see it does rise. The current should drop, which is the opposite. 
and see it actually drops. So this is the requirement for external force being applied as an over unity effect. And also we will see that the uh, RPMs also are affected. Okay. Let's take a six ninety eight. 698 RPMs. We'll bring my coil in. I'm going to bring it in just so. This should be very stable. I'm using my hand to kind of stabilize it. I'm going to come in just as it's lighting the LEDs. 857. And we brought it back again. It takes a while for it to come down in RPM, but seven seventy nine. Do that again. You have to have this beam lined up. This perfect eight sixty. What was it? Said? 726. So anyhow, you get the drift. Okay. So what we're looking for are these odd characteristics uh, in the voltage current and frequency. We did the frequency. Okay, we're going to watch the voltage now. We're looking if we're having an over unit effect that the uh, voltage will actually rise. See, it's 318 now. Uh, 3.18 volts. Just bumping on a 3.2. We'll go back and you can see that the voltage did rise. That's good. The current should drop to around 50, 50 milliamp. And you can see that the amperage has dropped. So we're actually overcoming the uh, the the vibration, whenever there's vibration, that's a loss. So it's overcoming that loss. The coil, uh, that is a loss there also. And it's lighting LEDs and speeding up at the same time. So this is all opposite from a conventional generator effect. It would be dragging down the, the, uh, uh, the voltage because there's a draw on the load. Uh, the voltage would be going down. The amperage would be going up because there's more requirements for turning and making up all of these losses. So this seems to be uh, a pretty good uh, test for myself. There again, as a disclaimer, uh, it may not be that at all. You make up your own, own mind. Uh, I put out these videos for the experimenter and the inventor and those who are curious. I really don't have time to keep at things. I let prior uh, projects go to the side because every time I come up with something I get new results, new ideas, and I just keep going. So this is a n nice new field for someone to work in. So I thank you for your time. Have a good day. As a postscript, this is where I get my motor catalog number DCM477 from All Electronics. This again is the placement that I use for my motor generator. See how that's fixed in there.
The only thing I changed got a little bit better results. I put one magnet here. It was a eighth by half inch Neo. There again, you can look on the net for telephone pickups. Uh, the 1.2K ohm worked the best. If you can find one or make your own. Thank you again. As another pro script, if you can't find your coil, then I would do the experiments as I first illustrated. Have your three quarter by quarter inch bolt, put a needle on it, and uh, work this area in there. That saves you from the frustrating of finding a coil. But that's what a coil is, it's just one of these things with a wire wrapped on it.